My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. For this rendering, we're going to use some of Crescent's uh, render no-show paper so that the marker doesn't bleed through. So a little trick here I learned from Scott Robertson is that you take the front cover and we fold a little crease in it just like that. And that gives us something to grab onto and move our page around while we're doing our rendering. Kind of handy. I start off my sketch by making sure that my perspective is correct. If your perspective is not correct in the sketch that you are doing, then you are wasting your time. I'm going to assume that everybody realizes that this is three-point perspective. So there are vanishing points that everything goes to. They're all off the page. It's something that if you are not proficient in doing freehand, you need to set up some guides. I'm not going to go into that right now, but it all has to go back with if your perspective's not right in your underlay, your rendering isn't going to be that great no matter how nice you render it. So I laid out my basic surfaces here of the cutouts in the backpack holder and how everything uh, is going to be folded up and uh, put in all the details and I'm just using this broad marker. I'm using a marker because I'm basically too lazy to draw it in with pencil. You, there is a chance that when you, even with a pencil, once you go over it with the marker, the graphite is then sealed into the page. So I'm just starting off with a marker and kind of loosely putting everything in. Next we're going to add in the shadows. And <clears throat> since the object is a blue object, which is a cool value, I am using a neutral gray, meaning it uh, has a different uh, value than the object itself does. And this gives me a little bit of contrast between the object itself and the shadow. You could possibly use a warm shadow here. It really depends on the surface that the shadow is being cast upon. And I start off with just a regular 10% gray and I'm going to build up the value all the way up to 30% just to give that shadow a little bit of depth. So once the shadow is in place, I'm going to come back in with my sky blue light, which is the color that I did the sketch in, and I'm going to do all the top facing surfaces with the sky blue light. That is the lightest value of the object here. Next we'll come in with a slightly darker value, this light uh, Carillion blue marker, and I'm doing all the second value surfaces. So these are the forward facing surfaces. So just like if this was a cube. If you haven't seen my halfway to black videos, I will link to it here so that you can understand how you can calculate the values on a cube. The third value is being added right here. This is a Mediterranean blue. So these are values that I've gone and picked out ahead of time very carefully to give me three values that go together. This will require a little bit of work on your part to find three values that all go together to look like an object um, of equal uh, value. So here are the basic three sides kind of all valued in. And now we'll add the shadow that is being cast from the left side onto the object here. I'm using a 30% cool gray. The reason I'm using a 30% cool gray is that the object is blue, so it's a cool object. If it was a red object, I would probably use a warm uh, marker, but in this case we want to keep the uh, values correct, so a cool marker there as well. 
Just really quick for all you technicians out there, that back surface being cast on the object should probably be a little bit darker than the 30%. Maybe I should have gone with a 40%. Um, but it reads halfway decent. So now I'm going to come in, basically, I'm using a straight edge, and I'm laying in all the edges on the object. And it's a you know, sheet metal object, so things are pretty straight and, and square. I don't draw the lines all the way to the corners, because those are generally rounded. I make adjustments here. I'm using a .3 a gel pen. It's a high-tech C. And I'm just outlining everything. You'll see in the corners, I come back, I add those radiuses, and I even add little double lines to show where the radius is going to be. Uh, you'll see me do that in a second. So I basically outline everything in the point three. I will come back and darken up uh, the edges on the outside of the object to give them a little bit more punch. But at this point, I'm just using uh, this point three to clean everything up get the lines exactly where they're supposed to be. I'm using a circle template here, 45 degree ellipse template, sorry, not a circle template, to do the uh, openings in the back for the screws, the countersunk screw holes, to get them correct. And here I'm starting to put in my double lines where the um, bends are in all the corners and all the radiuses. Again, I'm still using a double or a 0.3 to do all those. Now I'm going to come back and uh, darken up some of the details so they are a little bit more punchy. So in this case, the outlines and uh, any fold lines, things that overlap other uh, parts of the object. And uh, sorry, here we skipped a little. My camera battery died, and so I missed a little bit of the uh, rendering that's going on. I darken up underneath there a little bit, a little cast shadow on itself almost, and give a little depth, tweak a few things here or there. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add dimensions. So I don't usually add dimensions in a three-dimensional perspective uh, rendering, but in this case I didn't want to do an orthographic view, and I just needed some basic dimensions, and I do them in perspective. So I think it's super important to do that to continue uh, the illusion of perspective uh, to convey your information and not to draw it uh, in, in some kind of other sort of technical way because I think it really wrecks the uh, illusion that you've worked so hard to create to tell your story about your object. So try to keep all that stuff in perspective. Let's add some notes. So the notes are just great, just to help remind yourself about the material you're using, the finishes you're using, all the work that you've put into this rendering. Um, they are not only for you, but they are potentially for uh, somebody else. If you eventually quote this, or you're working with an engineer, or you have a manufacturer or a fabricator that you're working with, so that they can read your notes. Uh, and you just don't forget. That way, it's just a great uh, thing to have and put in there. So the last thing that we need to do here is to um, add in some white highlights. I add in a little bit of darker areas right there, just to add a little more contrast. So I'm using a white Prismacolor pencil here, and I'm adding in uh, just some little white uh, highlights where the uh, material might pick up a little glint of a reflection from uh, the light that's shining on the object. And the white Prisma color pencil is great for that on uh, the darker areas. And finally, or lastly, I'm going to add in a little white gouache just to add a little extra punch. Uh, you see the car guys do this all the time uh, when they're doing their renderings or their stylings on their uh, vehicles. And just adds that little glint of a reflection or a highlight to add a little bit of punch to your sketch. Don't forget to sign your work. I think that's pretty important. So if somebody sees it, they know who did it. And uh, if they were want to track you down, hire you. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to digitize this thing. So we're going to scan this in and we're going to adjust the levels. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make white white. And I use the levels tool here in my graphic uh, program. And you'll see me zoom in 
And so when you set the white points, or the way I do it, is um, I am selecting some of the paper that is not completely white. that may have a little bit of a gray in it. And that is what I set my whites to be white. So one of the things that I'm fixing here digitally is the dimension. So I put it facing uh, or going away from the object and of course this thing is mounted on a wall and so you wouldn't have the dimension going off in space behind the object you would have it drawn on the wall so I want to adjust that and make some changes here to uh, continue that illusion of it uh, being correctly drawn in uh, space and perspective wise so I'll make some little adjustments here now, the great thing about digital, of course, is that you can fix all the mistakes, all the little lines and uh, color overruns uh, from your marker, things that you didn't get right, and I got plenty of those. So we're going to just clean up super easy to come back in here with a little bit of white, fix up all the edges, make it nice and crisp and clean. That's the beauty of digital, and of course, you can zoom in digital as well. and. Uh, fix those little errors things that you can't fix in marker here we take out a little bit of uh, white or blue I should say we add white technically if it was actually mounted on a wall you'd have a little cast shadow there as well but we're not going to do that you could add some screw heads here too if you wanted to add them in perspective the last little detail that I'm going to add here is in the cast shadow on the wall there is a little detent uh, then you would have a little notch in your shadow and that actually got changed in the cardboard mock-up. So this is part of a larger series. Go check out that video of me developing this product. Uh, follow along on that series. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And uh, maybe you'll get to own one of these bad boys someday. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. You want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on? Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Also, don't forget to check out all the design and making gear below. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.